What's up guys? So I just wanted to give another quick video to discuss a few stocks that I had been um, purchasing over the past couple weeks and just kind of give you guys an update of where I am and what my plan is. I kind of feel bad because I should have made a video when I bought this. I felt like I should have kind of gave you guys an indication so that you would have known where I was looking to buy. But I don't want to just be giving people like, you know, buy indicators. Like the reason I make a lot of the videos I make is is to give you guys an idea of what to look for in stocks and like to do your own research, to look into the fundamentals of the company and all of the all of the things that the company's planning, its fundamentals, its its, you know, financials. I want you guys to actually look into these companies not just buy a stock because I'm like hey I bought this stock yesterday or I bought the stock last week now it's up 30% I don't want you guys to just jump in I want you guys to do your own research like one of the things I'll show you here is like I talked about American Hotel Properties and I talked about Valens Grow Works I talked about both of these companies a couple weeks ago and they're both up almost 40% from where I told you guys to you know where I when I started talking about them now to be full disclosure, I didn't, I haven't, I don't have a position, and I haven't taken a position in either of those companies. I've been really thinking about taking a position in Valens, but I, I, I'm kind of on the edge right now, where I just don't know how the market's going to go. Right now, we're kind of in a position where the market is pretty strong, um, when there's no real understanding of why it's so strong. So, when I say that, what I mean is that, like. The U.S. economy is down 50%. Now, I know most people will be like, well, we're in Canada. Canada is, you know, so much different. And Canada is reopening. The whole corona thing is starting to fade. We will go back to work. We are going to get back to normal. Companies will go back to full kind of full business mode. They will start to reopen. Everything's probably going to go back to normal for us in the next month or so. For the U.S., it's a different story. It might go back, but it also might not. And the U.S. might have to deal with this for another three, four months. And the issue there is that our economy is connected almost undeniably to the American economy. And our stock market reflects the U.S. stock market. So when you look at things like the TSX, you look at kind of this, you know, it went down in March and obviously it's come back since then. Now we look at the S&P and we go to the same area, we look at kind of this six month, we see the same fundamentals, right? It looks almost exactly the same. And actually the S&P has come back a little more than the TSX has, which is even scarier because it's like the US economy is down 50%. It's down more than 50%. You have 30, 40% unemployed. You have uh, unbelievable amounts of businesses declaring bankruptcy. You have you know, companies like JCPenney and like big um, warehouse stores that are closing their doors. You know what I mean? Like you have people that companies that are selling oil companies that are basically unable to produce oil because it costs them more to produce the oil than they will be able to make by selling it. So these are fundamentals that I think are going to create uh, some negative impact on the economy in the next month or so. But you never know. And that's why, like, I don't want to ever tell somebody, hey, go and buy this today because especially at a time like right now because the fundamentals and the understanding of why you'd be doing that just are not there yeah you're looking to count the bat the bounce back from this March low that way you know if you would have bought anywhere in March you were probably smart anywhere in April even was probably pretty smart but now you're seeing a situation in which the overall market is overextended back towards you know it's com coming back up to its highs and so there's there's kind of an issue here like I said, when we were looking at this T the TSX, there's a, a fear in a lot of different uh, sections and people are uh, basically claiming that the, we, will, we will retest the lows. So basically saying that the market right now is extremely overextended and a lot of the big bankers and a lot of the big kind of traders are claiming that we might be retesting these March lows in the next few weeks or months. And that's hard to, uh, it's really hard to say whether whether it's going to go one way or whether it's going to go the other. We don't know. We're kind of sitting here on our hands. Like I've been sitting on my hands for a while waiting. But I have, 
I did make some purchases. So on this dip here, I bought two stocks. I bought Canadian Tire and I bought Suncor Energy. So it's like Petro Canada, right? So basically two of the most um, iconic Canadian businesses, right? So you like, and I don't want to say like oil is iconic. Cause it's really not, but um, it is going to fade. And I don't, I wasn't taking Suncor as like a, a permanent, you know, 20 year trade. I'm definitely going to look to get into renewables. So companies like Capital Power, um, companies like Interjects, these other like renewables and, and kind of geothermal, all of these other solar, you know, wind, all of these other kind of uh, power generation utility companies. I will look to get into them in the future. But today, I think that you're going to see oil have the biggest bounce back and, and you're going to have the most gains from from oil, mainly because it's it, it was beaten down so low. Now, uh, don't like I said, this is my opinion. This is not advice. It's not trading advice. It's not saying go buy oil stocks. I, I really think that we might even see a, a huge crash. So I don't want to tell anybody to do anything that they're not comfortable with or they, they don't fundamentally understand. But I took the risk to buy Suncor because I thought that, and I still think that, oil will have a big rebound at least towards the end of this year. So in the next year, I plan to make you know some money from oil and then transition into renewables. That's kind of my my strategy there. So that's with Suncor. I'll talk about that in a minute. But with Canadian Tire, um, one thing that people should realize is that Canadian Tire actually trades um, on a bunch of different um, fundamentals. So you see here like CTC is like the what they would somebody would call it the primary um, Canadian Tire stock. So you can see here it's already up over its highs. 224 um, is its high and it's a little more expensive. But the CTCA is a, what they call a secondary or a um, like a an A class or a B class. So it, it basically is the same stock but cheaper. It's just a cheaper for everybody else to get in at the levels that they feel, you know, if they don't have as much money, they can buy CTCA rather than buy Canadian Tire uh, Primary, right? And like I said, that's over two hundred dollars. This is at one twenty-five. The highs was is one fifty-one, and the low is about seventy-three dollars, right? So I bought uh, at one hundred dollars. So I bought right here, literally one hundred and sixty-five. That's exactly where I bought. It was at the end of the day, Friday, um, two weeks ago. So I'm up 25% since purchasing that. So I purchased about 1,515 shares, which is $1,500, which I'm up about $400, close to $400. I'm up right now. I think I'm thinking about selling too, but I'm also thinking that it might, it's probably going to go a little higher to retest these highs. And then if we do have a market crash, then, you know, whatever. Because a lot of these stocks that I buy, I'm buying them for the long term. I'm not trading them to swing trade them. Like I did swing trade uh, Crescent Point Energy and a few oil stocks a few weeks ago when they were kind of really at their lows, like 150, 160, I was trading them up towards $2 and just doing that for a couple hundred dollars here and there. Um, and that's something you can definitely do. These are more long-term investments. Like Canadian Tire, I don't see going anywhere. You look at Canadian Tire, what are they, they're involved in, uh, they're, well, obviously they're involved in re retail home improvement so painting, so you're looking at lighting, you're looking at anything to do with, and you say, oh, well, they compete with Home Depot, Home Depot and Lowe's and all these other places, sure. But when you look at Canadian Tire, they're diversified in the sense that they are one of the largest sports uh, retailers in Canada. So when you talk about sports, and I know this because when I was up in Kirkland Lake, um, Canadian Tire was the only thing that's there. And they sell everything from appliances to hockey sticks, hockey equipment, and we're talking like basketballs, like all the things that you would need for sports, for for um, and also for automotive, right? So Canadian Tire is one of the biggest automotive uh, retailers as well in Canada, and they're also into into oil. Like they they have gas stations. Like Canadian Tire has hundreds of gas stations throughout Canada, so they're diversified in the way they plan to make money. And even right now, with everything being closed or with their main stores closed, they actually have seen a surge in online sales. And this proves that not only are Canadians loyal to Canadian Tire, but their new uh, technology and online platform POS services are showing good good growth meaning that obviously people are loyal but people are also spending a lot of money at Canadian Tire at a time when maybe not everybody has money so it just proves that 
it's a it's a solid um, it's a solid stock regardless of whether the economy is still shut down. They're still making money online. They're still making money through their gas, through um, and through their uh, uh, sports. They're still like they're still making money through their online platforms and through their uh, service centers and through their um, like auto automotive repair and through their gas stations. So even when everything's shut down, they're still making money. And it's the same thing with some like Suncor, right? Their gas stations are still operational. People still need gas. People are still filling up every day, right? Um, but don't think that I'm just, you know, trying to pump something up so that you should buy it. I'm just trying to give you an idea of why I did it, what I did. You guys need to make your own decisions and not just follow somebody else. Now, if you were to ask me, hey, Mike, do you think I should buy Canadian Tire right now? I'd say, hey, maybe you should wait and see what happens by the end of the week. I think it might sell off by the end of the week, go back down to 120, 115. Might be a better opportunity there. Anything close to 100, I think, is a great buying opportunity. Um, that's what I'll say. And that's my opinion. It's not trading advice. It's simply just my opinion. Uh, so that's Canadian Tire. Like I said, the fundamentals are there. It's a, it's you know the revenues are, are really nice. It's talking about a $14, $15 billion company. Um, they're profitable. They have been profitable for quite a while, meaning that they have enough to uh, tie themselves over if they do have like a longer down period. But either way, I think it's a solid bet. So uh, let's go down to the other stock that I purchased and that I wanted to go over real quick, and that's Suncor. So Suncor is one of the better oil companies in Canada. Now, obviously, no oil company right now is safe. All oil companies are subject to oil price volatility, fluctuations in the price of crude, which consistently are going up and down. And you never know, at the past couple of weeks, they've been going up and up and up, which is a good thing for oil. So I bought this at the same time that I bought... Um, at the same time that I bought uh, Canadian Tire, and it was around right here, around you know this pullback to this two right around here. It was about twenty three ninety, so I bought about twenty three ninety. So right now I'm up about uh, close close to eight percent, six or seven or eight percent, which you know that's not really what I'm in it for. I'm in it for this kind of bounce back up to the highs of maybe even like forty dollars or something like that, which I think it will. I think we will see $40 again. Maybe it'll take the rest of the year to get there, but I think we will see that. Um, we have to be um, considerate of the volume down here. You see there was a huge selling volume of almost 33 million shares, which is an indication of weakness. But you can see at the same time that happened, it barely went down and now it's going up again. So it takes a lot of selling pressure to send this down, not as much buying pressure to send it up. but this is also scary and this is why I say like you shouldn't necessarily think to buy right now because you need to look at these indicators that there might be something on the horizon and you probably have a bunch of you know in institutional traders that own this stock that are saying hey I'm getting out now I'm getting out now so that should tell you something right now you say why are you not getting out and you see that well it's because I'm holding this for the long term I'm not in this for uh, 25 percent well and you know I'm, I'm i'd be happy to take 25 percent 400 dollars but i'm holding this for the long run mainly because two reasons a it's a dividend stock so a dividend stock means that it pays you for holding it so me holding this stock so suncor i have a little more than i have you know i have about 90 shares almost 100 shares so if i was to get like you know 70 cents a share or something i'd be making like you know 70 80 bucks every three months so that's like a couple hundred dollars a year just for holding the stock right it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad kind of risk to reward, especially when you see a long growth in the future coming from the oil rebound. Now, as I was saying earlier, I don't think that I want to invest in oil for the next 10 years. I want to invest in oil for maybe the next two or three years. I don't see oil as being a a great you know, long-term investment. I don't. I actually, and it hurts me because I don't really like investing in oil. I don't really invest in things that I don't agree with. But well, and when I say agree with, I mean like the destruction it causes to the environment, not necessarily the economic or, you know, other considerations. But I definitely think that renewables are going to be the, the, the wave of the future. I think renewables are going to be the better bet for the long term. So I probably will be transitioning um, oil into renewables within the next few years. 
that doesn't mean I'm going to be selling this anytime soon. It doesn't mean I'm going to be selling this in the next year. It just means that I will be looking to do that. So that's that's my thought process there. As you see, um, you know, Suncor is a, is a 37, 35, 30 to 37 billion dollar company. So Suncor, you know, and, and I know that they just put out a report. Um, their CEO said that electrical vehicles are disrupting oil demand as much as the coronavirus. So some people see that as a, as a bad thing of saying, hey, they're, they're obviously not happy with their sales right now because they're saying electric vehicles. But I actually see that as a positive because it's like they're basically saying that, hey, guys, uh, coronavirus has not really done that much to us. So to see our stock getting get cut in half, literally, because of this coronavirus thing, it's 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 really just oil. It's the price of oil that's sending the stock down, not the coronavirus. Right. They're make they're like I said, they're profitable. People still need gas. People are still filling up now. Not not nearly as much as when you have the economy running to full. But as we gradually reopen and as, and, you know, everybody that was off was traveling. A lot of people that were off were actually traveling more. They were actually driving. You know, we saw the people that were getting tickets. So many people were getting pulled over for driving 300, you know, or 200, you know, kilometers an hour. Just insane speeds. I remember there's a car that flipped the other day, uh, Cambridge. Uh, some New York um, guy or something was driving in Cambridge at like 200 miles an hour on the highway and flipped his car. But people are stressed so when they're stressed they drive they go out and they go for you know drives they they go visit things they you know so they're spending money on oil even though they're not working they need to drive everybody needs to get around so it's still making money it's not like cineplex or some retail store that's fully closed it's like hey we're not making any money we're, we're losing money because we're paying for our to keep our stores open we're paying our staff if we still haven't laid them off so all these fundamentals come into play but with Suncor, everything's still operational. And really, like, they're, they're overall, other than what they pay for the driller, so, like, their, their biggest infrastructure cost is actually in Alberta, or in their actual drilling sites, and where they're getting the oil from. And they're actually diversified. They're not just completely relying on oil. They have natural gas. They have a few renewables. They are kind of starting to transition, but they definitely are more heavily focused on oil. So... These are things to be considered of. I just, I like the idea that Petro Canada is, you know, almost on every corner. Same with Canadian Tire. These are, these are fundamental um, businesses in Canada that as you're driving down the street, you can notice. As you drive to another town, you notice. Like as you are on the highway, you see um, these are pillars of our, of our society. So, um, or they have been at least. Maybe they won't be for the future, but they have been for the past 20 years or so. So, are they going to disappear overnight tomorrow? I don't think so. I think they still have a little bit of room to run and, and they're still going to have, you know, a lot of impact on the economy. They're still going to be making money, at least for the next few years, until oil really, really starts to collapse, which I don't think we've seen it. I think we've seen the beginning of it, but I don't think we've seen kind of the, the actual collapse, which will happen when oil prices start to, well... Once, once the demand for oil, or I should say the supply for oil, can't reach demand, and then we kind of get into the situation where oil prices get so high that people can't afford oil anymore, and will look to transition simply because they can't afford to fill up their car every day with the prices that they're trying to charge because they don't have the supply, right? And that will happen. I don't think it'll happen in the next few years, but it might happen in 10 years. It might happen in 15 years. Either way, we need to be considerate of this, which is why you know I don't want to hold Suncor for the next 30 years but I might want to hold it for the next five, if if you know if that makes sense to anybody. Anyway, so these are the two stocks that I've kind of been my most recent purchases. I uh, I like a lot about these businesses. Um, give you a quick quick you know look into Suncor real quick, um, just to kind of get a sense of what they're doing and where they're where they're at, and and a sense of kind of what their goals are for the future. But as you can see here, um, Petro Canada is their main, their main like mode of income, but they are transitioning. Their sustainability report explains how they're trying to transition into a, um, basically transition into a cleaner future or a more, um, a future that's not so reliant on oil is essentially what they're what they're saying right so as you go through their their kind of fundamental ideas of what they're trying to do um, you can get a sense of 
where their mind's at. And you know, I don't I don't want to claim that I understand a lot of this stuff because I really don't because it's it's a lot of kind of stuff that I think is is industry specific and I don't necessarily like get hard into the oil industry or hard into any industries. I more just look at the overall fundamentals of the business and uh, understand where, where the company is trying to go, right? So the idea here, and this is kind of where I wanted to focus most of your guys' attention, is the transition into renewables. So you see these wind power stations all throughout the prairies, you see these uh, biofuel stations they have. So they're biofuel stations. Um, and this is wind cogeneration. So this is this is a multiple. Um, it's not just one source. It's multiple source. Um, so you get a sense of their future is not necessarily completely reliant on oil. And you see here they have a 29 year oil sands reserve life so even just their oil production in the oil sands they they believe will be another 29 years of production of consistent production so is oil going to disappear tomorrow probably not you know 70 to 80 percent of the cars on the roads today are gasoline powered cars or is everybody just going to stop driving their gas powered cars tomorrow no so the oil industry is probably going to bounce back and it's probably going to bounce back once oil prices start to come back up and we see kind of a uh, a better kind of understanding of where the market's going and people are more comfortable to get in. So this is kind of a history of their environmental and social actions. So like I said, they are trying to transition to more renewables. They're trying to reduce their impact on the environment. Um, they're, they're partnering with indig indigenous communities to try and make things better. Um, they have launched the EVOC Innovations Clean Tech Fund to try and put mo some of their money into infrastructure. They completed Canada's first coast-to-coast -coast EV charging network. So they are actually powering a lot of the energy charging stations are actually powered by Suncor. So it's giving you a sense of how they're planning to diversify, to get out of oil, to get into things like renewables, to start using things like wind, solar. And you see this here, right? This new co-generation by 2025, they're gonna reduce emissions and they're going to transition into biofuels, into renewable diesel, renewables like wind and solar, and that will be their future. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I like the things that they're doing, and I kind of agree that a lot of their plans, I think, are in match with what people want to see. But you got to understand, there's also a lot of oil uh, profits out there that are, that are you know, going to stand with oil for the rest of their life and and there's a lot of people that are investing in oil but I think right now people are unsure if we're going to have another collapse so we're going to see what happens if it collapses in the next few weeks then we're going to have probably a good op buying opportunity from the low if not then we're going to look to just continue with the gains that we're seeing right now and as if the price of oil just keeps going up and up and up then the price of Suncor is going to keep going up and that's what I think is going to happen, whether that happens in the next few months or whether it, you know, we have a collapse and then we have another resurgence. Either way, I think we're, we're going to see some growth. So that's my idea. That's what I've been thinking the last couple of times. I'm probably going to make another video to discuss a few other um, stocks that I've been looking at, but I'll save those for another day. Um, yeah. I think that that pretty much is good for now, but if we want to kind of get a better sense of their transition into the future just 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 click on some of these go through their website look at their um goals and and you know what they're trying to do like their their st Clair ethanol plant um how they're planning to transition and and as you, and and how they're planning to use these to benefit the overall line of the company today and where it's going to be going in the future See, and this is, and this is, you know, one of the things that you should think about is kind of using things that people are not necessarily um, thinking about, right? So like biofuels using corn and the starches um, to create ethanol, right? So using basically a product that we vastly overproduce, 
corn and where we typically have to you know burn or destroy large crops of corn in order to keep the prices lower so farmers will actually destroy a lot of their crop in order to keep the prices lower so they'll actually make money on selling so they can actually burn half of their crop and sell the other half for at a price that was so much higher than what it would have been if they would have sold the whole crop that they make more money selling just half of that crop now obviously that's an that's a extreme simplification and this happens on a massive scale but that is essentially what's happening it's called you know creating scarcity so that you uh, improve the price increase the price and make more money this is what corporations do so if you can take that corn that they're gonna burn and turn it into ethanol then hey you're basically getting a free product that's extremely cheap to make energy that you can that can basically last forever right so that's that and uh, obviously their wind their wind uh, is also pretty good there they have three main facilities now um, but they are expanding and looking to move into the US and uh, and across Canada with their solar power farm solar or sorry their wind power farms and they are actually looking to get into solar I'm pretty sure or at least uh, it's it's a thought right but just the idea that they're they're thinking about the future they're thinking about this and you'll remember when I just said earlier how the CEO of Suncor said electric vehicles are the number one threat to the oil industry right now it's not the coronavirus and it's funny that he was to say that at the same time when you when we saw before that um, they have actually um, set up more electric electrical vehicle charge stations than anybody so that just proves to you right then and there right this um, that completed Canada's first coast-to-coast -coast EV charging network so they are embracing the change and finding ways to benefit from it at least that's what I see from that right because if why would he make that announcement if you know what I mean if it was gonna hurt the company no essentially what he's saying is hey look guys electric cars are coming we're gonna find a way to profit from it and we're gonna find a way to profit from oil, the oil industry which is our main bread and butter right but we're gonna find a way to make money from these new innovative and sustainable uh, industries so that's my thoughts that's what I uh, that's what I did on this trade uh, I haven't sold any of my positions yet I'm holding probably for the long term unless I, I see some fundamental reason why I should sell and then maybe look to get back in if I st if I think the market's gonna cr crash again but this is all the game we play as investors and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think I will hopefully be making another video later this week um, and let you guys know what I've been trading or what I'm looking to invest in and I hope you guys uh, like subscribe comment tell me what you think tell me if you like these videos tell me if my voice is annoying and you don't want to hear me talk again all these things I would love to hear and uh, get some feedback anyway thanks guys have a great day